UFC Fight Night Nashville coverage here, 835. Before we do that, we want to welcome in Patrick Aslone, our number one crusader, our Miami, our South Beach Lifestyles editor, um, our fight guy, always got the good stuff going on here. Patrick, before we get into the UFC, we got to talk a little bit about targettrading.co. Tell us about your wins and losses this week. Let's see here. 75 wins, 22 losses, three break even. Did pretty well this week. Not bad. So another incredible week at targettrading.co. Dad, you're in contact with your listeners constantly. And one of the things that I know they talk to you a lot about is target trading. Can you just tell us about how target trading has helped your listeners unlock some fi financial um, independence over these last few years? Because you're able to start your own business without a lot of money. You don't need brick and mortar. You don't need you know a million dollar loan or something like that. You basically started with grit and discipline and a computer. And that's what Patrick has been able to teach his students at Target Training. Go to targettrading.co. Takes a while, but all of the listeners that we've got involved with them, and there's probably now about 125, uh, all of them over time are successful with it when they start tr trading live. Now, the the uh, the program is arduous and is it takes a lot of discipline and it's not like you're in it for a week and then you start trading live. Three, six, seven, eight, nine months, depending on how much time you put in, before Patrick will allow you to put real money on the line. But that's the key to his success. He's going to wait until he's he believes that you've uh, exhibited the knowledge and the uh, and the discipline and the understanding to be successful before you go live and put your own money at stake. That's why he said this tremendous success rate you put in a promo code godzilla he's going to give you 50 percent off on the tuition just go to targettrading.co targettrading.co and if you go to these sites that like evaluate things like you know whatever they are the internet ratings and stuff the guy the guy's company's off the charts right i mean you google you google his company's name it's all positive you google my name you got to read 90,000 posts <laughs> before somebody says something positive, right? It's all negative, right? That's somebody, true. In fact, somebody somebody emailed me the other day and said, I found all this negative stuff on you. If you pay us, we'll get it all, I guess, you know, <laughs> clean it up or get it off the website or something. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? If you were to work full time on me from now until 2028, it would still, you you couldn't find enough. But you don't find that on Patrick's comp company. So go to targettraining.co, targettraining.co. It's all real. And uh, many of the, the students call in. They've been very successful with it. So give it a shot. Might be for you. It might not. But you don't know if you don't call them and try. Go to targettraining.co. That's a hilariously ironic live read that you're talking about. The amount of trust that people have in Patrick and that they should trust you who people have no trust in because when they Google <laughs> your name, it's only negative stuff. That's like the weirdest circular. Like no, because I get yeah. look because I I have I because I put myself out there and I get hit pieces from the communists and the left okay, constantly okay. and all the all, all the right, left wing yeah. blogs. So they all hit mm -hmm. me and I don't do anything about it because I don't care. The hell do I care? I'm yeah. six sixty five. You don't want to tune was... me in. Don't. As far as Patrick's was... company is concerned, he gets. He, he he has a great program and all my listeners that have went to him i haven't had one negative complaint including mom so that's all you all you all you need to know target training dot co that was my fault um so i opened i opened up that can of worms uh, yeah target training <laughs> there so yeah that was <laughs> i'll i'll take i'll take accountability on that one um okay so <laughs> let's we're going to skip the um, the undercard fight we're kind of most excited about. I want to talk for just a couple minutes, though, Patrick and Nate, about before we get to UFC Fight Night Nashville, just about the Nate Diaz-Jake Paul fight today. Uh, because, you know, Nate Diaz, one of the most entertaining guys to ever come out of MMA. And Jake Paul is really good at being uh, famous, I guess. Jake so, Paul, yeah. Let, yeah, just good at uh, being Jake Paul. <laughs> he's terrific at being Jake Paul. That, and there's something to be said for that. So. Nate, we'll start with you. I don't know, you know, as a betting man out there in Nevada, if there's something you like here on the card or if you're just going to watch it for fun. I mean, I think that my my heart wants to take Diaz in this fight as like a plus 280 underdog. Um, just 
from a heart perspective. Like I, Diaz is a fan favorite in the UFC. He's been a favorite of mine. I think he is one of the most hilarious interviews in all of sports um, because he's just a ridiculous person. Um, and I find Jake Paul to be maddening for like all of the opposite reasons of Nate Diaz. Like I, I, I respect Nate Diaz because he just seems so like just real and unvarnished and everything with Jake Paul is more or less fake and designed to uh, draw attention to himself. Whereas Nate Diaz often looks like he's sort of trying to actively not have any attention paid to him at all um, in ways that I find refreshing for an athlete. So, I mean, and, and Diaz has been known, like, to get, like, to kind of break it down, like, Diaz has always been known as sort of a good boxer within the confines and the sort of framework of UFC. It's just a matter of, does that translate to being a good boxer? And we haven't seen a lot of evidence sort of anecdotally in the handful of fights that we've seen where UFC guys have transitioned to that being the case i mean you throw out the conor mcgregor fight because that doesn't really count because he was fighting maybe the greatest boxer of all time when he fought mayweather and and jake paul's really just fought guys that either weren't great boxers and were just better you know sort of mma guys i think this is probably the best boxer he's faced um that's coming out of the ufc and you know obviously he lost to a boxer in his last fight when he fought um tommy fury but I think Diaz like has a has a chance here. I mean, I think that Diaz has the gas tank to go all ten rounds. Um, I think he has the skills to not just get smoked by Jake Paul's power. So then it just becomes, you know, who can who can sort of hang on. And I think that Diaz probably has the bigger gas tank. So I don't think he's crazy to win, you know, a sort of like split decision victory like Tommy Fury did. Um, if he can just sort of hang around and keep landing some shots, I don't think either person, I don't think that he's going to knock Jake Paul out. Um, and I don't think he's going to batter him, but I think he can hang around and outpoint him for a little while, parts of the round. Parts of the fight. Patrick, you, you think there's value in the Nate Diaz underdog? Well, I was going to go off on my fight of the night on a, on a tangent, but I can do it equally well in, in this. I think these fights are fixed. I think they're a joke. I wouldn't bet on these things for anything. This guy, what, started boxing like seven days ago, and somehow he's beating the best striker, one of the best strikers in the history of MMA and Anderson Silva. You could say he's 40 years old. You could say the guy shot. He'll kill anybody in a straight-up fight. Diaz has been fighting his whole freaking life. I think this is a joke to me. I, I don't know if, if, Paul has anything to do with fixing it. I don't know if it's handlers in the back that do it, but this is the same thing. And it's funny that, that Nate brought up the, the Conor McGregor um, Mayweather fight. If you knew what you were watching, I'm not saying you didn't, Nate. Mayweather played with him for nine rounds, changed yeah, his he carried him. style three times. He got times. him over, yeah. He changed it three times. He never got hit. He get, didn't get touched unless he wanted to. And then when he wanted to finish it, he finished it. And it, it's, to me... It's, a, it's, a, it's an absolute freaking insult what this guy is doing. Do I love the fact that Nate Diaz is probably going to get paid more in this fight than he's gotten paid in his entire UFC career? Yes. And God bless the kid. Um, I think in a real fight, this guy doesn't even belong in the building. With that being said, you know, he took a loss to Fury's brother, I think maybe because he sort of kind of had to, to a real professional boxer to get another card in you know people interested in watching him fight again is it it was it a joke was it a fluke i don't know to me i don't i don't like playing around with these these carny circus hack tricks and these gimmicks it does feel like that i never watch these paul fights because i mean it just feels like something that's made for social media so who cares i mean the bud crawford fight last week was much more exciting than anything we're going to see tonight with uh, paul versus diaz but we all love exactly it's, it's, you want you want to fight guys go fight real fighters Go and, and with with absolutely no rigging in place, and let's see what happens. And why isn't Jake Paul fighting MMA fights? You're such a badass. Yeah. Go fight an MMA fight and see what happens. The same exact reason why Mayweather will never ever fight Conor McGregor in an MMA fight. And I'm not huge on Conor McGregor unless Mayweather is dead broke and needs the money. That's the only way he'd ever fight him because he would get his butt handed to him horribly. So yeah, a little emotional. Right. About that. I, mean, I apologize. 
oh, that's okay. And I mean, there are, you know, people have um, floated the John Jones Tyson Fury fight. And, you know, Fury basically was like, look, I'm not an MMA guy. Like I can't, I can't win that. I, I'd get, I get my, my uh, butt kicked. So a lot of situations there where um, the crossover, it's just two different sports. It is, um, but let's let's then turn to UFC Nashville because I really I could talk about this all day, but I really really want to talk about the Andrade Suarez oh. co-main event because this is this is like a really weird co-main event. Um, Andrade, who is coming off, I believe, a loss, but is still one of the most ex- two. two losses. That's right, is still one of the most exciting fighters in the strawweight division here for the women. Um, and then Suarez, who's undefeated, but is has coming back from a neck injury and has been out for four years. Now, if you read anything online, a lot of people are like, hey, listen, Suarez is the heavy favorite. She's never lost a fight. But I mean, a neck injury four years ago? Patrick, is this something to be worried about or should we be all in on Suarez? Well, this is also something that, you know, neck injuries are a strange thing. Kurt Angle had a broken neck, won an Olympic gold medal. So True. It, it, there is absolutely no way any doctor is signing off on this or Dana White is going to allow somebody to fight when his butt is on the line if something happens to this person. So I, I think, you know, neck injuries are neck injuries. You know, I, I, I've had neck injuries that were pretty horrible. And when I found out it was a, uh, a spasm in my trap and it was released, I was as good as gold the next day. And, and, and some, some, you know, some, some surgeon wanted to operate on me three days later. So here we go. Um, I will never, ever bet on Andrade again. I've bet on her twice in fights that she should have won. She's in the Arlovsky category as far as I'm concerned. She's a great, she's a great company person, okay? She'll fight whenever she's asked to fight. She's earned the money she makes. And you know something? Good for her. I just will never bet on her to win again. I wouldn't care if Suarez was a quadriplegic coming into this fight. I'm betting on Suarez to beat Andrade. Yeah, I'm with you there. And that's because we were both at Andrade last time we talked about it. We were also high on her and she made us look like idiots because she lost and she lost badly in that fight. She looks like she's going on um, sort of on the downturn there. And Jack, she's fought four times in eight months. That's That's a lot of, that's a lot of weight cutting. That's a lot of really, really intense training. That's a lot of mileage on your body. She's got a brand new contract f- from the UFC. And you know something? If she's just doing this to get paid, God bless her. I have no issue with that. But she is not someone I'm ever betting on again. We talk about that in golf. Me and Nate do on Clubhouse Picks, our weekly golf podcast. Some of these guys who play every like, week like Siwoo Kim. I mean, it's just hard to handicap them because they're just so exhausted. And golf yeah. is not exactly MMA there. But still a tiring sport at times. Got to be out in the sun. You know, you can only eat um, after you've hit the club. So it, it can be it can be tough to be out there on the golf course. Nate, uh, last words on Andrade Suarez. I mean, I'll just throw out my pick. I kind of like Suarez to submit Andrade at plus 115. Because if you just take the chalk, it's like minus 360. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that's probably um, a smart play. I mean, I think that I was kind of going to go even probably a little bit more conservative and just play under two and a half rounds. Uh, at minus 200 I was just gonna eat that I think that this this fight just doesn't look like it's built to go the distance with either of these fighters I mean yeah. we've we've seen sort of Andrade sort of um durability issues I guess um yeah. I I think that that's you know a real thing I think that I think that Patrick is is absolutely right I mean she's just she's just putting a lot of mileage on her body right now um and she hasn't looked that dominant and and Suarez has like real holes. Like if Suarez can't really close the distance on Andrade and really just sort of wrestle with her, um, you know, Andrade can still is still a dangerous enough striker to really put some damage on her as well as she's trying to close that distance. So this just doesn't feel like a fight that's gonna you know go to the cards. It feels like someone's gonna get finished, and it's either gonna be Andrade landing a heavy shot that puts down Suarez, or it's gonna be Suarez just you know doing the sort of submission wrestling thing that she does. Um, that she's been so dominant with. So I, I kind of lean even more more conservatively that just someone's going to end this fight. I don't know who, but I'm willing to lay, you know, minus 200 to, to bet on that. Jack, may, may I add something, guys? And, and, and to Nate's point, um, Andrade is a much better striker, but it's going to play right into Suarez's takedown game. 
Andraj is allegedly a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt who just falls apart when she's on her back, which is exactly where Suarez wants her. So to me, I, I think it's definitely not going three rounds. I think Suarez is a bully, and I love that about her. She's a beast. She will just keep going forward, and I think Andraj may get a little bit over-aggressive on her strikes, go right into a double-leg takedown, and that's where the fight stays. I think Dana White and the UFC want Suarez to yeah. be a big part of their future, and I think they set up this fight with Andraj to basically give her an opportunity to win from with a fighter who has been struggling lately and put her in a place. Because Andraj is still a popular fighter. She's still ranked. And she's ranked kind of high. So yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, you got to get through some of these gatekeepers in order to challenge for the straw weight belt. And I really feel like that's what the UFC is trying to do here. Hey, listen, that hasn't fought in four years, nursing a neck injury, um, straw weight division. You know, she's cut, I think she cut weight. I think she's a natural fly weight, just the way she's built. So trying to get her a, a, a winnable fight after this amount, but not one that's just like a stupid prelim. I mean, she's a good enough fighter where she should be on the main card. I think that's kind of what's going on here. Now, in a minute, we're going to talk about San Hagen versus font, which is another really weird fight for uh, this week. Before we do that though, I want dad to tell us a little bit more about healthy. Cell. we talked about REM sleep, but I know they have so many great products that we want to spend a couple minutes just highlighting some more of those. Well, healthy cell. I'm just a believer in this, uh, in this company and Dr. G and Papa, because uh, they really revitalized my health and my life. And everything is natural. So not that I'm into homopathic stuff, but I'm into stuff that works. I told you about REM sleep. I'm going to tell you now about uh, joint and mobility from Healthy Cell. If you got aches and pains now, you know, if you're Jack or Nate, you're in your, you know, in your 20s or early 30s, late 20s, you know, you're fine. But you start getting a little long in the tooth, you know, you get aches and pains, right? Fuse your body for whatever reason, you're 65, you know. See this cup of coffee I'm picking up here? Two months ago, I couldn't pick it up. Two months ago, my arm was so bad, I couldn't do push-ups. I couldn't shave with my right hand. Try shaving with your other hand, right? Not a fun thing to do. So I called Dr. G and Pop. I asked him, hey, can you help me with anything? Because I'm taking like four a leave a day. I don't, I don't think this is healthy. He turned me on to joint and mobility. Took 12 days Pain went away. Arm is fine. I'm back to doing, you know, 30 push-ups a day, 35. You know, got all that gone away. It's all natural. Mom started taking it. Two weeks, she said, ah, this doesn't do anything for, for me. Week three, it kicks in. She gets up. She says, boy, I feel so much better. So go to HealthyCell.com, Joint and Mobility, promo code Godzilla, 20% off. Now, the other thing that happens, I have chronic back pain. It's just You'll just live with it, right? I'm overweight and I'm a big guy. It's just chronic. You just deal with it. I took it for my arm, but the back pain subsided subsided by 75 to 80%. And I haven't taken a bottle of Aleve in about two months since I've been on this thing. So um, just go to healthycell.com, promo code Godzilla, 20% off. You got some makes some pains. Check this out. Joint and mobility. Thank you. Healthycell.com, joint and mobility. Okay. So let's go now to the Sanhagen versus Font main event fight here. This is one of those gatekeeper fights that the UFC likes to put on, not a pay-per-view, so it's not going to be a title fight in the – oh, I didn't write it down. Sanhagen, what are they? The um, What weight class? It's like catch weight 45, at 140. Maybe? Yeah. Okay, that's why. That's why. So, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so, 140. so they're bantam weights, but this is just a catch weight fight. It's a catch weight fight, yeah. yeah. Okay, catchweight fight. That's what that's what I thought. Okay, so um, look, Sanhagen's trying to break through here and get a title fight. Font is another one who it's you know this was a Nurmagomedov fight for um for Sanhagen and he had to scratch. So Font is stepping in. We talk about this all the time, and the more I do it, the more I just feel like man, these guys who step in at the last minute, as much as they want to bang, it's so hard for them to upset. Patrick, does Font have an opportunity here to do that, or is Sanhagen going to run through him? Well, here's what happens. Sanhagen wins, which I think he's going to. His fortune does not change, because if he would have beaten who he was supposed to fight, he probably gets a title fight. He beats Font while he was expected to. Font wins. This is a, this is, this is a no-lose situation for Font. 
He was never expected to win. He took it at short notice. And if he beats him, he's now going to get propelled. Um, Sanhagen, though, I don't think he's going to have a chance of beating Sanhagen. Sanhagen is just better at him, better than where he is everywhere. He's a much slicker striker. The guy is Gumby on the ground. You're not going to submit him. He's got great gas, and he can hit for, He can hit you from anywhere. Um, Font does have knockout power, but he's extremely inconsistent. Um, he's up. He's down. You don't know which guy's going to show up that day. Um, I think he's probably, you know, what's he really have to lose, you know, except taking a loss and it's not going to really count against him because he did a solid for, for Dana and the UFC to step up and take a fight uh, on very short notice when he's supposed to be fighting in two weeks. So I, I think he's got nothing to lose, but I think Sanhagen wins this hands down. Uh, they're both very, very tough guys. Do I think it goes to a decision? No. I think someone's getting, I think Sanhagen is going to most likely knock him out or TKO. I can't tell you what round I, I'm not, I can't tell the future. I just think that's the way it's going to go. I think, I think you're right. Look, Font has been losing his chin. He's getting a little bit older. He gets knocked down all the time. Um, and he, he has trouble in third round and, and on. I mean, the last fight, he was really breathing heavy by the third round. So it's not like his cardio is very good either. San Hagen is just a, a much better fighter there. Nate, is there some ways we can get on some of the plus sides of the odds because San Hagen is, you know, minus 360? Or look, I mean, are you, are you a font guy? Sometimes you go the other way on these. I am kind of a font guy. I think I, think I am a font guy. Um, I, think that, I think that a plus 270, like these guys just look, you know, just from a betting perspective, I think that plus 275 is too disrespectful for font given – that both of these guys throw quite a bit of volume in terms of striking metrics. Um, they both, you know, outland their opponents by, you know, over over two strikes per minute. Um, so they're both pretty prolific with volume. I think that Font is probably being a little bit underrated for how technically good he is, you know, it's sort of sticking the jab and sort of, you know, being able to control things with his striking. Whereas Stan Hagen is just like a little bit more violent. I mean, I think that I think that plus do I think that like Font's gonna win this fight like all the time? No. Do I think that he wins this fight like you know, like one in every three or four fights? Like yeah, I do, and that's kind of what the odds suggest. Um, like I think that I think that he can get there for this. I think that if they just stand up and punch each other, I just don't think that Sandhagen has that much of an advantage. If Sandhagen wants to try and grapple with him, then I think that Font is probably in trouble. Um. But I think that if they're just standing there just just fighting each other, I don't think that there's like that much of an edge to Sandhagen. I, I worry that the fight will get stopped because I worry that Font's eye is going to swell up and look terrible like it has in his last few fights and that the doctor will end it. Um, and I think that it'll look terrible for scorecards if that happens. Uh, but I think that Font's like, you know, live here. I think that everyone's saying that Sandhagen's just going to roll over him is, is not is not giving him enough credit. Um for for sort of being able to stand in there and bang in five round fights. I mean, he's fought four of his last five fights with five rounders. Like you know, he can go the distance. Yeah, it's to me, it's it it's if Sanhagen decides to get it to the ground, it's over because they both would rather bang, which is kind of why I thought Patrick might like fawn a little bit more because he likes those guys that just stand up there and just take it on the chin. But like I said earlier, they these guys Font doesn't have a good chin, so even if he's if even if they stand up and bang, I mean, he could knock him out pretty quick. I think Font's never San... been knocked out. Yeah, but he get been knocked he's down, but he's never been knocked yeah. out. Yeah, well, there's a first time for everything. I think as things get, I, I think Sanhagen is going to try to get to the ground here. I love the Sanhagen to win by submission. That's plus six hundred. Uh, I mean, he's not a guy who's known for that, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. So I really like the odds there. Uh, but San Hagen's a heavy favorite. If you go pretty much anywhere, they're going to tell you take San Hagen by decision at like minus three sixty. It's going to be a fun UFC fight night here in Nashville. I think I'm really excited. We had the pay per view last week. I don't know if any of us are tuning into the Jake Paul fight, but we'll see. Look, we want to thank Patrick Aslone as always for being with us. We love this UFC stuff and all of his knowledge in that realm. We want to thank the Sultan of the Spread, Nate Perry, our senior golf contributor. And our senior editor there at GodzillaWins.com. And, of course, we always want to thank the Godzilla of Truth and his love for the running backs in the NFL, John Fredericks. We will be here with you next week, live, 8.30 Eastern time.